That's why it's in um, Anyway, so lately I've been trying to think about why I'm still single. And I have a pretty good, good idea of why, but recently a friend told me it's because I'm a racist. Um, but I'm really not. There's not a racist bone in my body. You know, I would make love to a Chinese woman with a pair of chopsticks and let a Mexican man eat off, eat my ass like a pair of, or a plate of rice and beans. You know, uh, but I think it's really, it comes down to me being very angry, bitter, and jaded. And I think that's why I'm, no, it's okay, I, but I think I have a right to be angry, bitter, and jaded. You know, my mom always comes to me and she tells me, Jason, God will never give you more than you, he thinks. He thinks that you could handle. And to her, I say, you know, take your ass to church with that talk, because I don't need to hear it. That's bullshit. Because you know what? God will only give you what he can handle, and I guarantee you he can handle a hell of a lot more than I can. Because I'll tell you what, Mom, I'm 30 years old, single, unemployed, I have no driver's license. I found out that I'm an alcoholic again for like the 13th or 15th time. And I live at home with you. <laughs> so don't talk to me about God only giving me what I can handle, because I'm sorry, God, but I can't handle it. <laughs> so yeah, I just moved back home with my mom from San Francisco. Um, back in East San Jose. There was a couple incidences that led me to that. You know, we all have those moments in our lives where we start recognizing that things are becoming unmanageable and just kind of fucked up. And I was having those moments every fucking day, and it just kept getting worse and worse. Um, it all kind of started out one night, I was at home, drinking, of course, and I decided to do some house cleaning, and I saw this piece of Velcro on the floor that's been stuck there for like a month. So I decided to finally scrape that up, so I got the sharpest knife I could find. And I start scraping that off, and the knife slipped, and it went through the top of my thumb and out the bottom of my thumb, which was awesome. So my next stop was over to the ER, which was great because I was drunk and just kind of cranky and in pain. So I walk into the ER, and I just got my, I'm holding my thumb like this, and the lady at, I hear the lady at the front desk go, Who are you Googling? And I look up, and I what? And she goes, oh, not you. How can I help you? Well, I just put a knife through my thumb. Why are you going to do something dumb like that? <laughs> and I look at her and go, seriously? She goes, well, just fill out these papers. Go sit down there and we'll call you when we're ready for you. I say, okay. So I go sit down. Got my thumb up. And then I hear again, ho, oh, you Googling. And so I look over, and she goes, boy, I already told you I wasn't talking to you. Now put your thumb down. Nobody picking up hitchhikers in here. Don't come get you when I'm ready. And so I go, okay. And then she looks over to the security guard. Who you Googling? And he looks up at her. I ain't Googling. I'm texting. My roommate tried to say I scratched his CD. So meanwhile, back at my seat, I'm just trying, to, trying not to get yelled at again. So I got my thumb over here trying to hide it. And I brush up across one of my boys right here. <laughs> and it felt kind of good, so I brush across my other boy right here. And then I hear, boy, I don't want to know what you're doing, but if you don't fill out those papers, you're going to be on your way to the next hospital. So I, I say something, something, I mumbled something, and she goes, you know what, if you got something to say, you come up here and say it to me, because I don't want to hear you talking over there. So I get up and I say, all right, I got a question for you. You got to be a bitch to get a job here? And she goes, I don't like your attitude. And I said, I don't like it either. What you want me to do about it? I'm about to tell you what I want you to do about it. I want you to curl up in a ball and smell your rotten vagina until you die, you dikey bitch. Well, that little outburst didn't actually get me what I wanted, and it got her what she wanted, and security came over and kicked me out, and she is now curled up in a ball smelling another dikey bitch's rotten vagina. So, if that wasn't enough, you know, about a week later, I get my thumb healed up, and I'm back at the bar again. I'm drinking. It was about maybe there for like an hour. I was already like six, seven, nine drinks to eat. 
Next thing I know, I'm in the back of a Honda Civic or something with a bald guy in a tranny in the passenger seat, and we're on our way to a drag show somewhere. So we finally make it to the club, and I get there, and I have one or two more drinks. I honestly don't remember, but I swear to God, next thing I know, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. The next day, I wake up on the side of the freeway in the back seat of a stolen car with my shirt on backwards. My socks off, put my shoes on, my sunglasses on my head, nothing but a credit card, a bag of Doritos, and a big ass bottle of Dr. Pepper in the passenger seat. So that was pretty fucked up and that scared the shit out of me. So at that point I decided to take myself away from myself and move back in with my mom. But you know, I still didn't learn my lesson. So it wasn't too much longer after that. I was back at the bar. Drinking it up, you know, probably about nine, ten drinks deep. Bartlett's out at 2 a.m. I'm walking down the street. And I look to the left, I cross the street, and I see a cop. So I toss my head back, and I look at him, and I give him the construction worker whistle. And he looks at me, and I go, And... I throw my head back again. <laughs> so then I keep walking. I got my head down to my chest. And then sure enough, I see the lights coming around, make the U-turn. I go, oh, shit. The cherries are flashing in my high beams. I fucked up again. And I hear this, sir, can I have you sit down on the sidewalk, please? Oh, I can't sit down. I have bad knees. Okay, sir, I'm gonna have you sit on the hood of my car. Oh, your hood's so nice and warm. <laughs> sir, can I have your ID, please? It's in my backpack with my mom buzz. <laughs> sir, what is, what is a mamba? Oh, strawberry, orange, lemon, and raspberry flavored chewy candies. Kind of like Starburst. So he goes in my bag and gets my ID. Comes back over and he says, Mr. Moore, it turns out there's no, there's no warrants out for your arrest. <laughs> That's what you think. Well, Mr. Mort, I'm going to trust the station on that one, and I'm going to give you a chance. You know, can you give me a reason why I shouldn't take you to jail right now for drunk, for being drunk in public? Mm. Oh. I feel so nasty. Excuse me, Mr. Mort. Oh. I said, I feel so nasty. Well, that was enough for me, Mr. Moore. Step away from my car and have a good night. And that was enough for me, too. Thank you, guys.